Oh. Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to a tutorial on recovery gear. We have all the recovery gear that I can think of. I've reached out to a few people, borrowed some gear, some gear I've been sent. We are going to start from A, and go all the way to Z, explain what each individual thing is, and then there'll be a separate video, what I recommend to have as a recovery kit for, for winching, for snatching, the full recovery kit, the stuff that you probably don't need, and the stuff that you should really have. This could be a long video. In the description below, there's jump points. You can skip to any part of the video you wish to. So if you're only here to look at the random stuff, the snatch straps or all these stuff we're talking about here, you want to go back and look at something, you can jump around to your liking down below. The old spade or shovel and a tire deflator. That'll get you out of most situations. The most important thing above all are proper recovery points on vehicles. I've done a lot of videos where I've mentioned this, so I'll touch on this briefly. This is a recovery point. Uh, this one happens to be an ARB one. This is for an MP300 Navara. Now you can even see on the box, it says rated for a 4.75 ton bow shackle and eight ton snatch strap. So that means that this isn't rated for a 12 ton snatch strap with an F250 pulling like a bull out of the gate. So everything has um, a point where it's rated to and a point where it can break. They don't make these for all vehicles, unfortunately, but there are other companies that do recovery points. Brand new vehicles are hard to get points for. Common vehicles like Hilux, Land Cruiser, Patrol, Ford Ranger, every company does a recovery point for them. Still on recovery points, this is a tree trunk protector. We'll get to straps later. This can be used as a bridle. So if you have two recovery points on a vehicle, which I recommend, then you are dividing the load on the vehicle and it's, it's a lot less stress on things. Then we move on to the rear hitch receiver. These are actually quite cheap. Definitely get one of these, these are good. I will steer you away from this particular one here. This is, a, uh, this is all my opinion, by the way. So if any company gets a bit toey with me, it's all my opinion. In my opinion, the Kmart one, this one here, it's hollow. I wouldn't go for something like that. They actually are a bit weaker than the solid block. This is your solid block. That's what I would go for. Many different shapes and sizes, many different brands. This one fits a uh, four ton shackle. I'm rounding numbers here. This one fits a five ton shackle, the big boy. So this is what you put on an F250 or a Ram. This is what you put on a Land Cruiser, Hilux Patrol, etc. Then we have your more fancy, sexy looking ones like the Factor 55. They make some pretty, really nice, pretty stuff. This can work with a soft shackle and a um, hard shackle. Goes in there. So as you see here, there's another Factor 55 one with a dead man soft shackle. I'll get more into soft shackles in a sec. And then you have Max Tracks. They've even brought out their one now. This one can only take soft shackle. It's specifically designed for sh soft shackle only. So it also looks pretty cool. Your most common shackle is the middle range one. That is the 4.3 ton working load limit. That is your most common one. These you should have two of, I reckon. So we'll put those here. Then you have the big boy. This is for your bigger vehicles. And then we move down in size. These are for the vehicles that have small recovery points or maybe only have a factory tie down point. I don't recommend using those, but if you absolutely have to, you have no choice, then these are the ones you would use. You even got smaller ones here. These are only rated to two ton. So what you need to do is factor in the strap again. So you divide the load and only gentle pulls, do a lot of digging, make sure it is a very gentle uh, recovery if you're gonna use weak points like that. I don't recommend it. I would say, I would suggest not doing it, but if you have to, then that's your choice. I'm not responsible for you breaking your car. Soft shackles. I absolutely love soft shackles. This is a gator jaw from America. I think the Americans uh, brought the soft shackle out first, uh, but now heaps of companies in Australia do them as well. This one here has a breaking point of 14 ton. I've used this many times. There's a dead man one. They all the same pretty much. This has more of a sleeve on it, so it protects it a bit more. And then ARB, they've started doing them as well. That also has a pretty cool sleeve on it. 
which you can actually remove and you can wash it afterwards. Sand grains is your worst enemy with this, these kind of shackles. Like if you go on mud, the stretching will cut the little fibers with the sand grains. But we'll get more into maintenance in a different video. Let's move on to winch hooks. Okay. Winch hooks and snatch blocks, which are to do with winching. We'll start with your winch hooks. If you are going to go your Kelvin hook, don't go to small ones. They're not as versatile as the big ones. The big ones, you can actually fit the strap in here. And um, yeah, these, these are just a pain. Get rid of them, get a bigger one. But even better than that, onto stuff that, that I actually use. On the front of my car, I have an ultra hook. This is Factor 55 gear. The ultra hook on the front has heaps of features on mine. That's the one I prefer. It also has like a, like a leverage like this. As you'll see on your screen right now, I pull my daughter's tooth out with it too. Excellent hook. <laughs> they also do like your standard nipple one here that you put a bow shackle in, one of these. Sits like that. And then you've got the other ones here which have other purposes and um, you know, for certain applications. I'm not sure what this one's for, but I'm sure I'll figure it out somehow. This one here has a rope guard on it like I have on the one that's on mine. This will prevent the UV light from eating away at your Dyneema rope, which will prolong, prolong the life of it. Whereas if you have your conventional Kelvin hook, it's exposed and also this can flap around a bit. Not only this brand, but other brands have them as well. They've got rubber backing on the back of them. It's, it stops it from moving around and there's a bit of give in it as well. Moving on to snatch blocks. There are two different types of snatch blocks here. You have these ones here. These are meant for steel cable. This stuff here. You can use Dyneema rope on these, but I would recommend not using it because it can get pinched in, in certain, certain ones. Like the AIB one should be okay, but I would only really use these for steel cable, but you can use them for rope. Take this one for instance. It does have some sharp edges and whatnot on it. And once they start rusting, that's stuff that can eat away at your rope as well. So just keep that in mind. So if you have these, make sure you maintain them, clean that rust off, because it's abrasive. This is like your modern stuff. You can get all these in different sizes. You can get a smaller one, it's so tiny. I do not recommend those. I recommend a bigger one. Either the Max Trax one that they brought out, uh, which I don't, I'm not even sure they sell these yet. And then this guy here, which is, I don't know what this is from. A guy sent it to me, 7P tactical recovery ring. Yeah, this is probably the size that I would use. It's nice and big. The rope that goes around it has got more surface area. It's not like a, like a real sort of narrow section where all the pressure's on one point. I'm not an engineer, but uh, that's my theory behind using a bigger ring. They're quite light as well. These are bloody heavy. This is so light. Now we're talking about straps. We have kinetic rope. This is stuff that's new. This is new to the full drive industry, the game, whatever you like to call it. Snatch rope. This is a Dobinson one, but you can get all different types and brands. These are meant to stretch more than a snatch strap. I think from our experience, it doesn't feel that much different. We still need a real situation where someone's really, really stuck. We'll test them out there. But what I will say is these conventional snatch straps, these take up less room. Check that out. That's your snatch strap, rolls up. That's your snatch rope. So it takes up a lot of room. I haven't seen enough benefit to go with a snatch rope over a snatch strap yet. That's just my honest opinion. This stuff here lasts a long time if you look after it. These have 20% stretch. What I do find is if you join two snatch straps with each other, you will get 40% stretch. So if you need to snatch someone out who's got a camper trailer or towing a boat or something, that's where you need the 40% stretch. It's much more gentler on the vehicles and you can give it a bit more gas acceleration. This is for your Ram trucks, your F250s. This is a 15 ton strap. If you have a Land Cruiser and there's a Suzuki stuck and you really snatch them, the guys in the Suzuki are gonna know about it. So that's for your heavy duty stuff. 
And then we got extension straps, which I did have one. There you oh, go, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Dylan. That should sort you out. The point Dylan is here for, this is full drive super center gear. Super cheap auto gear, I'm going to mention here as well. You can get cheap recovery gear that is good. You just have to make sure it's rated. That is the main thing that we need to look at. As long as it's rated, that means it's been tested. All big companies, big brand names, all big companies, they all have certain Australian standards that they have to comply by. All their stuff gets tested out. So you can use cheaper recovery gear. No worries. Nice jacket, You mate. want to borrow my jacket? No, I've got two over here. It's okay. all good, mate. We've got to stay safe, all right? <laughs> Go off in your king swag, mate. <laughs> Tree trunk protectors. If you look after your recovery gear, it'll last you possibly a lifetime. This is 10 years old, believe it or not. This has seen a lot of recoveries with me on the end of it. Also good for a bridle strap. Then we have the ARB one. This one has been abused a bit, but still holding up really well. This has been very abused out here on our testing grounds where we are now. Um, same thing, does the same same stuff as any other tree trunk protector. Then we move on to these two straps from Factor 55. These can be used as joining straps, not as a bridle because the angle is too, is too severe. For bridle straps, you want a bit more length. These straps here can be used to repair things. So if you have uh, bent a control arm or a steering arm on the front, you can actually use this with your winch to try and correct things, pull things straight. Uh, also good if you want to put around a headboard on a vehicle you, you don't want rolling over, you can secure things to, to places that you normally can't recover off. It's not meant to be used as a recovery point when you put it on different places on your vehicle. That's there to assist and hold the vehicle while you are recovering by other means. So two different sizes. Then we move on to the blankets that like Dylan was just wearing before. These have pockets in them, you fill them up with sand, you throw them over the line. Most people give you one with each. So this is a message to all brands out there. Give two in your recovery kits because I believe you should have one at each end when you're recovering, on a winch line or a snatch strap or an extension strap, you gotta have one at each end because if one end goes, this will help dampen it and send it to the ground. Even if you don't believe that these work, because in some situations they don't actually do much, uh, you'll see in our winching snapping video where we snap winch cables, these did nothing. However, if you have these on the line, even if you don't think that they're going to work for your situation, have them on there anyway, because any onlookers or bystanders or, or people coming past, they can see that there's a line there, because this is flagging that there's a line across the across the, could it, you could even be recovering across the road. You need these on so people can see there's a line there. The dead man. This is my favorite piece of recovery gear for the year, or well, last year anyway. This came out in 2018. Very versatile. This can be used as a tree trunk protector. You can sling it around a rock. It has four arms to pull off here. So you can wrap it around things. One of the coolest things about it is you can bury it in the ground and you can pull yourself out of sand. And we've done this with it a couple of times for testing. And we compared it to dropping a wheel into, you know, digging a hole, chuck a wheel in there and winch off that, which we did successfully do on a second attempt. But we found this one here was much lighter work to use a dead man. Very versatile, comes in a small bag, so it does roll up and pack up. It's not really much heavier than your tree trunk protector straps but if you have this I still recommend having a tree trunk protector because you can't really use this as a bridle on a vehicle without risking damaging it and this is you know it's not cheap but it's worth the price and you don't want to damage it so yeah just another option there recovery boards I have done a compare on max tracks and treads before so if you go back and watch that you'll see my reasoning for what I'm about to say here. So we'll start with the Max Trax. When you put these through the washing, they shrink, they end up this size. No, I'm just kidding. These short ones, they're mainly for leveling out your camper trailer. So I'll use these when, when we're out on a trip, level the X2 out or whatever. So that way I'm not sleeping on the angle or the kitchen's not on the angle. But they're also good as a high lift jack base, but we'll get to that. They can work as a recovery board. They don't stack. So you'd only have one of these. 
Some people may not see the point of having them. For a lot of people, there may not be any point of having them, but I use it as a leveling device. This is the old style. This is a second gen Max Trax with all the plastic lugs. This has been abused by other people. This is Dylan's. They have melted off, there's a few holes in it, but it still works. It still bends, still pretty good. Even if you knock all these off, you can still use them. This is Gen 3. This is the Max Track Extremes. I think it's Gen 3, I may be wrong. These have metal, metal spikes on them. I believe that these are replaceable. Through on the back here. These are coated in black paint, but as you can see, the black paint's come off. Uh, it's exposed the metal underneath them, so they don't melt, which is good. And I believe it's aluminium. I really rate these, I like them. We used them a lot on the last trip. Now we move on to, now remember this is my opinion. This is my opinion, in case I upset anyone here. This is your treads. I refer to these as your wannabe max tracks. It's like Pepsi and Cola, my opinion. Just wanna <laughs> put that in there in case I get in trouble here. The reason why I'm not a fan of the treads, and you'll see it as a comp Comparo video, is these snap. Torben used to have four of them, we broke all of them going up a hill. We then got the max trucks out. And then we got, and we got out, Torben took them back to the shop. The good thing about treads is they do give you a replacement if you break them. So he opted to buy some max trucks afterwards. These are Aaron's, these have snapped. A mate of mine, Carl, he snapped two of his as well, just on the beach with a Prado, not a heavy vehicle, just driving over it, snapped them. I don't rate the treads. My opinion, I would suggest if you're gonna go for recovery boards, then I would go Max Trax. The good thing about recovery boards, this is a solo recovery device. It's like a winch, except for there's nothing to winch off, you don't have a winch. These will work in every situation. They're really good in sand. So if you're stuck by yourself, these will get you out. A snatch strap won't. Jacks. High lift jack, bottle jack, and Mr. Jack. I'm not gonna get into these too much. They're just your options out there. I've done a sole video on high lift jack versus bottle jack versus air jack. The air jack's not in the mix here. Watch that video to get an idea of the jack. But my choice of jack is the bottle jack. Like I said, all details on the other video. The ARB jack, this is like a new thing, hydraulic. It's like using this without having to use much effort. Not a bad item, and I'll show you what it can actually lift as well. It's off the ground. Well, most of the weight's off the ground on the back. It's starting to go sideways. So let's let it down. This is what I like about it, instead of high lift jacks. I love jacks are freaking dangerous. The jack. With your high lift jacks, your bottle jack and your jack, you will need a base plate. Your options are a steel plate, a wooden board, that's your cheap options, you can get that pretty much anywhere. Otherwise, you can buy a proper base plate. This one's your Ridge Rider one. These can cost a bit though, just keep that in mind. And then you have the short max tracks like I was talking about. So this can kind of be used as a couple of different things. That's another option. It's gotta be upside down and you put the high lift jack like so. We're now to the strange and weird and just useless stuff now. The Sideshow. Save your money here, folks. In my opinion, these things are not worth the coin. I lashed out a bit to get this thing. I was curious. It didn't make it in time for my uh, bottle jack video, the versus video in all the jacks. Um, this is more of an indoor use thing, but it actually, it lifts pretty easy. So I'll, I'll give it that. So it works on compressed air and it can lift your vehicle, but it's a bit bulky. You'd have to unscrew all these bits and pieces to carry it around and it's pretty heavy too. Probably a good choice for at home, not out here. Then you have the sand anchor. The most useless thing I've ever used. And it's not just this sand anchor here. I've tried multiple types. I've tried them with other people. We could never get these things to work properly. Damn. You already have them. Yeah. You gotta try it back in the hole? I'm just plowing. <laughs> try it back in the other one there. Yeah, way too easy. 
Nah. I think I could change the angle on the pull. I'll step out of the way. It might actually dig in. You can probably just look on YouTube, type in sand anchor, and I reckon there'll be like a very small amount of people that have, can figure out how to actually use these things properly. They are just useless, in my opinion. And they're quite heavy, take a lot of room, clang around a lot. I don't think they're very good. Other people may disagree, but that's my opinion. Then we move on to this thing here. I saw some adverts on social media, and I thought, you know what? That's, that looks like a cool idea. But we've tried this out, and this is what happened. We got the Jeep bogged, and we reckon had we reversed, we would have got the Jeep out, because we struggled to bog this thing all day. As soon as we chucked these things on, it dug bigger holes. It just made it a lot worse. So these are not your chuck them on, get out, I'm sweet as. I reckon they're making it worse. I think so. Because I saw you reverse up there before and you're actually cutting up the yeah. track. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's not working at all. We're on private land, by the way, so we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be testing this stuff out in a state forest or something because you never know what stuff does. That is terrible. Just pop the bonnet so we can shut that thing up. Not impressed at all. Nah. So for the Sideshow product here, the uh, 20, well, 40 buck eBay stuff here, that's making it worse. Now I've seen videos where it actually helped people, but I think that was in a different situation. On sand, it just, it just digs holes. No way, these, these, are, these are quite useless. And the amount of stress they've put on your drive line, because watching the Jeep drive around with them, it's the, all four corners are doing different things, getting shock loaded. We even stuck max tracks in to try and help getting it out, but they shredded these blocks. That's the one here that got shredded. Once we actually got Dylan out, we went forwards again, and then he got stuck straight away. I reckon he would have driven that. This Jeep is almost unboggable. I can't speak for him in mud because I haven't tried him in mud, and it's uh, the end of summer here in, here in Western Australia. It's bloody hot. There is no water anywhere. If you've tested these in mud, I'd like to know your opinion on it. Just save yourself 40 bucks and don't buy these. That's all recovery gear in a nutshell, folks. Stay tuned for the next video where I recommend certain kits for certain people, depending on the vehicle, the situation that they might put themselves in, and the gear that they already have. So stay tuned for that one. That'll be on the screen somewhere. Thank you for watching. Subscribe over here, give it a thumbs up. Go back in the skip points below if you want to skip to anything else to support creational content like this. Patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl goes a long way to help the channel to maintain the level of content that's coming out. Thanks for watching.